The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday and market days. And what an interesting session we have here. And thanks to all our hosts previous to this. Don't forget, Steve's got his webinar coming up. Second webinar tonight in the series of two on the psychology of trading, psychology of investing, psychology of the psychology. I think it should be a fabulous second uh, second period to the first uh, show that was one, one week ago and really um, had a wealth of information. So please check it out, TFNN. Now, let's go to our numbers. We've got the S&P E-minis up 1550 at 2110. What's really fascinating about this, let me do this right now while we're thinking. There was the Chapman Wave falling axe breakout, then a retest, and then a hug of the 200 period exponential moving average in the in the 120 minute chart, this coral line. And look what we've got here. Let me just do this. I'll do a match from the left side to right there. And then from the right there, that's 2,113.50 high, just a dollar, uh, $2 off the all time high. Do another one, call it green. And look at this. We have a match. We have a match going to this afternoon to test the 21.13.50 level. What's really interesting about this is if you look at almost all the indices, let me just move this away for a minute. As I do the numbers, I'll do it with the charts. Let me show you something. The Dow. Dow right now is at, <laughs> going to type it incorrectly. There. The Dow is at 18,216, up 155. The all time high is at 18,288 made on uh, 20, no, sorry, that was on the 3rd of March, I believe. Yep, the 2nd of March. So what we're looking at here is that we've been March, April, and half of May. We're looking at two and a half months in a market that never rests, not since 2011, has it taken, uh, there was a 22% correction, not since then has there been a double-digit correction. But what we've been seeing, and I've been talking about this for months now, is that there's been a sideways consolidation. We are now back to the range where markets have been propelled to the downside before. The S&P, so the Dow is at 18,288 uh, all-time high. Um, that's 60, what is it, 67 points, 77 points away from where we are right now. And this is going to be a big test. Is this a leg F or is this a leg B in the daily chart? Um, at this particular point, the MACD is good. Not great, but it's good. And the stochastics at 78% is not at 80%. It is starting to fail. So if I look at the 120-minute chart, it is under... Um, it is under that uh, uh, 18,288 level. It looks like this is a leg C. I don't know how else I could count it. So it's a leg C in the 120-minute chart, which implies that there should be a nominal leg D at least. So that would take us to the uh, 18,230s, uh, let's say. A break above that and then a strong move tomorrow would give it the chance, give the Dow the chance for the first time to break out and go into the 18,300s and close up there. If, I, if we close up there, there's a new ball game as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's a new ball game in the sense that the volatility index will be neutralized. It'll be down probably in the 11s. Right now it's at 13, but it'll go down to the 12 something, maybe test in the 11s. Once it sticks there, it's like a magnet. 
there's a chance that you could see a brand new move to the upside. My thinking here is that we've got, that the sectors that I that we are focused on as being the weakest continue to be the weakest, and they've been very important sectors before. And as a result, this is a very critical time. Let me talk about that because in terms of SPX.X, in terms of the S&P, there's that trend line that it's bumping up against and it cannot break out. Not yet has it broken out. Within that context, you've got 2125.92 is the all-time high, made a peak D, holding in the weekly chart beautifully above the line period moving average. Look how many stalk legs to the down, not stalk legs, how many thin little spindly legs to the downside can we see? This is the third one in, the, uh, in three weeks, so far this week, halfway through the week. And as a result, you've got two things going on. One is this is giving you ricochet performance to break out. And the other is it also says these spindly legs invariably at some point get filled in. A good part of it gets filled in. And that's the wick of the candles of this week, last week, and the week before. All right. Uh, but it's very positive that you're pouncing above it. So I want to put it into context. The one is that the week, the monthly chart just says, hey, ho-hum, I'm just moving higher. I'm, I'm holding beautifully. I'm above the nine period moving average of 2047. And at the same time, I'm, I'm honing in within a few points of the all-time high, 2125.92. And uh, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong in my chart price-wise. Hey, wait a minute. When we look at it, technically, the stochastic's at 88%, but lower than it was before. It was in the mid-90s. So that's not a negative, but it's a sign of some kind of weakening, a divergence. And the MACD is diverging negatively, which says, if I was to close positive, in other words, if my green line, the, the nine period exponential moving average, the differential, we call it, starts to break above the, the red, the slow moving average, you will see the Dow test, the 18, uh, the sorry, the S and P testing the 2130s. All right, so we're going to go one step at a time. And the daily says, hey, first you got to get, you know, you can even go to the 120 minute chart. 120 minute chart is peak A, peak B, double top, and then A B C. So we've got a little mini A B C here. You can still get to a D. So this trend line is formidable resistance. Let's see if we can break that today. Let me make it. Let me make it a little bit thicker, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, right there, and we've got weight. I'll make it nice and heavy. Uh, there it is. Look at that resistance. That is tough stuff to get through. We'll see if it's able to do that today. All right. So so far, good action. Very good action, uh, especially after the zero percent change yesterday, and that zero percent change at highs, at all time highs in particular, means a lot to me. Intra intra bars during uh, day, that is during uh, um, during the middle of the week um, still way below the, the all-time high or still way above the uh, all-time low or the recovery low if that's what you can, recovery wouldn't be um, say call it a 52 week low that's the, that's where I like to see them but when it's in the middle like this uh, the zero percent change from yesterday um, it's a it, it serves a purpose, but not the, the purpose that I initially made a big fuss about 0% changes way back in the 80s. So well, let's go through the S&P. The S&P says 2102 is very critical support on the day. But on the week, any move down by Friday going to the 2097 to 2094, 2094 level, would be a big failure. At any break in the next day and a half, above 2117.69 says, hey, the next level is 2120, uh, and then you've got 2125 as upside targets. I, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, how do you explain when the weakest stocks, um, the strongest stocks before are not becoming the weakest stocks, but they, they're the ones that are, are failing to recognize the rally and are not participating? Uh, that becomes... That rotation says it usually takes time, which it's done. I don't know if it's enough time. And my thinking here is that we probably uh, need a little more time uh, before the money has 
pulled out of, say, the biotechs or the pharmaceuticals in the areas that were fantastic in the healthcare and just come out a little bit and go into other areas. And what would those areas be so far? It's just select stocks. It's not really sectors that are leading at this particular time as I read it. So I'm going to be very careful and say the S&Ps were very clear parameters. This is making uh, 21, it's at 2111 right now, a break above 2119 in the next day and a half is very positive, a close below uh, tw two, uh, 2105 says watch out, the 2102 level is going to be very critical on the short term, but I'm really saying 2094 on the S&P will be uh, imperative to hold because if it doesn't hold that, it says we're back in that trading range. So now the QQQ series, let's do that. Nice bounce today, but it is still not showing the kind of strength that it had before when it was going to uh, recovery highs. But it is good action. The weekly chart, yep, above the nine period moving average. Parameters on the QQQs, uh, a close above 109.60 would say, hey, I'm trying to go for the upper range. And a close in the next two days below 108.20, especially 108, would say, uh-oh, failure pattern. IWM, IWM. IWM was, in fact, one of the weaker, weaker sectors. It had been one of the stronger sectors. Then it became one of the weaker sectors. And now we're looking at it still very weak, very weak. Um, up 0.54 when the Dow's up 0.78% and the S&P's up 0.65. Watching this real closely because it, it's a harbinger. It was a harbinger on the way up. And I think it's been telling us about this consolidation. You've got to watch it real closely. So the parameters are, it's a 123.16, up 67 cents. A close, that must be a close, above 124.18 to 124.23-ish would be, I would consider it a positive for the market, not necessarily for IWM, the Russell 2000. And a close in the next two days below 122.20 would be very negative. And so that's the way I'm looking at it. NYA, NYA. NYA is holding well. Now, I'm going to draw this pattern in. You know it very well from my, my technique. This is the Chapway falling X. It's the expanding wedge, lower highs and much lower lows. And then it turns around and makes a kind of a V or a cup-shaped pattern. Remember, markets are made up of only three chart formations. The straight line move up or down. The cup or V-shaped pattern, that's the same thing. They have different connotations, but they pattern-wise, they produce pretty much the same results. Or an arch inverted V-shaped pattern. So cup, arch, straight line. That's what you got to think. And right now, what we're looking at is there's a potential for a V. At the same time, the falling axe pattern is a chapter, uh, the falling axe in my, my sneaky book. Chapter 24, slide 391 starts it, and it means that a decisive break above the, the left side, 11,205 in the New York Stock Exchange, says you could in fact start to test 11,248, the all time high. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 141, S&P's up 13. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. 
While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. All right, folks, we're back. So let me just finish up here. I've got, I wanted to say the gold is up three at 1221. Had a really nice session. I'm pleased with the follow through today. Um, with dollar pulling back as much as it is, uh, it's actually now up. 0.05, but it really pulled back uh, intraday. Let me just see. Uh, DXY. Uh, yeah, it's having a little bit of a bounce off the low. It should try to re recapture the 94s just for a moment, and then we'll see whether it, it dips further. Um, I'm looking at gold. I'm looking at, say, I'm looking at ASA, which for me, it's just, it's just a real nice stock to... Uh, Look at uh, for the gold. It's uh, ASA gold and precious metals. Just touching the 200 period moving average. I've got. I'm calling it E right now in the daily, but the MACD is still good. Stochastics okay. It's 78 percent. Monthly is uh, the weekly is in leg. I believe B and the monthly is really just uh, hinting at a little bit of a rally here. But most important about what I'm looking at about this is that there's been a spectacular run off the nines into the 11 and a half area. That's a good percentage move. So I wouldn't be surprised if gold does have a little bit of a pullback as gold as the dollar has a bounce. Look, the GLD is right at the 200 period exponential moving average. I could even call this brand new. It's either E as a cup formation or brand new B. But I don't need to, to really make a decision about that because it's the way the 200 period moving average is acting as a repellent. And if I look at the 120 minute A, B, C, so it's gone to D. 
got a candle that says, hey, I'm, I'm hitting a bit of resistance here, and you can see that. So that, that says to me that we could have a, a day or two of a pullback here in the golds, and then we'll see if the dollar retests the lows. And those gold stocks, some of them have done very nicely. Um, we, in fact, do have a gold stock, and it's acting okay today. Um, I, I just... Um, I want to put it together to get with a dollar. It should be way high. Gold should be way higher than it is, but it's acting pretty nicely now. It's the first time that the weekly chart is showing a chance to make another large um, H pattern, um, and that would see 118 and a half to 119.50 within a day or two in the GLD. That would be very positive, especially Friday. The GLD, instead of being weak going into Thursday and Friday, is actually strong. And then just re real quickly, I wanted to mention that bonds, the, the bonds are up 730, uh, bonds are up 630 seconds. The TLT is back in the 119s. Um, I, you know, if bonds start to go down a little bit further and yields go up a little further, I suspect you will see some uh, some markets, general market selling. Uh, that's just the way I'm considering this. Okay, let's go to our – well, we haven't got a call. In fact, I got an email just a moment ago from Travis who wanted to look at CLVS, stock that he's had a core position in for a very long time, uh, and he's traded it very well. And he wanted to know, is this the time <clears throat> to be putting money to work to see uh, if it can go even higher? You know, is this the time that it will go higher so that it needs to put money uh, to work? Well, I've got a peak C. That's the only way I can count it in the daily. A peak C at an all-time high is very unusual to, to abort. Yep, the weekly charts are more important and the monthly charts are more important than the daily because they take the larger tide. But just on a smaller-term basis, I would say it's acting so well now. The IBB, let me just check the IBB. IBB was a week before. Yeah, the IBB is, 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 is attempting a little bit of rally. It's up $1.95. It's not doing all that great. But uh, this is what I'm going to do. CL, uh, CLVS, right? Clovis. So Clovis, uh, oncology. Uh, there was a very big oncology meeting, I believe, going. it's going on right now. Um, uh, all, all the innovations that are going on with um, uh, breast cancer, and that's why I was a little surprised that the the IBB didn't participate. It's the first time there's been some kind of a con first period because it's going on now for uh, about a month or two. This is the first period where the IBB really hasn't been participating and leading the way to the upside, the biotech ETF, and has actually been funny. We are, in fact, I should mention it uh, just for full disclosure, we are short the IBB very different methods and the IBB itself. But in the meantime, I think that these smaller stocks that have a story, this is lung cancer, um, Clovis Oncology, made a U-shaped pattern. Sometimes U-shaped patterns break down completely once they form, and other times they're really telling you that there's so much buying energy that they want to keep retesting to see if there's going to be a breakout of the U-shape, the right side of it, to spiral to the upside, what I call the Chapman Wave cup and ladle breakout. So we're going to be watching this closely. So my answer to you at 88.65 is I would put a little bit more to work, but that little bit more that you put to work, I would absolutely have a stop in it. It's at 88.71. I would say to you, if you want to have as wide a stop as the low today of 88, uh, sorry, 82.34, that's not my style. I wouldn't do that because if it's going to fail, it'll take out the nine period moving average. I'd have a stop of 84.50 if you got in right now. 5% on a small position to get in, I think is reasonable. I'll be back straight off this message and the Dow's Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. 
For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $70. 25% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you, something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I just wanted to mention one thing for the, it's a terrible tragedy that what happened with the, the train accident. But you've also got to remember that um, you can't fault the tracks. If the tracks were steady for thousands and thousands of trips, uh, a month um, when you go double the speed limit speed limit is about 50 and you go 100 that's just gravity I mean that's just what can I say it's just uh, the, the trains that have come off the track whether you have a little model train or whether you have the real thing and it's a, it's a tragedy it's something that shouldn't happen if, if it's just speed um, human error uh, or mechanical error, who, whatever it is, um, it's a speed. So you you cannot fault the um, the track. I think you have to fault something else, the speed of the engine. So um, I just wanted to say that because I, I keep hearing about funding um, the uh, Amtrak, which we've been hearing, of course, for decades. It's like the post office in a way except it's really much more important and it is, it, there's no reason why we shouldn't be uh, keeping the tracks as safe as possible and adding as many tracks, etc. But uh, they're two separate issues. Just remember, the issue is the issue and it's not what politicians need to uh, be talking about right now. Um, anyway, so I'm looking at the uh, iShares of the Global Timber and Forestry ETF. 
Remember, we spoke about this quite some time ago. I said the weekly chart has given a sell signal from 56.69 at peak E, but it remains in the up channel. It's getting to the inside track support area between that cyan, light blue color, the dashed line, and the red line. The red line is also uh, the, oh, is that the, can't remember now. Yep, the 50 period exponential moving average, and that coincides exactly with what we're looking at here as the lower uh, trend line. But in fact, it's been a consolidation in this whole area. And it's very interesting. It almost broke down. It hasn't broken down. Is this going to be that H, lowercase h pattern that's successful and then turns around? And if it takes out the high of 55.65, trading at 54.98 right now, it has a chance to retest the 56s? Or is this going to be the H pattern that has the lowercase m pattern form and then it breaks down? My my. Suspicion based on the chart right now is that it's going to form the M pattern, then break down and take out 53 support uh, within the next three weeks. The other thing is the Philadelphia housing sector, HGX uh, index, it has made a 238.32 peak F top in the weekly chart, had a sharp pullback. And remember, this is the pattern that I often draw in. I had it here, but I took it away because I didn't want things to look too messy. And that's usually what I draw in is, a, is some kind of a cup formation attempt. Remember, I always think of the uh, Statue of Liberty. This is the, the arm and this is the hand. This should, in fact, be the, the torch that she's holding. But it isn't. It's just a cupped hand. So that gets filled in partially. And then you get the big test. Is there a right shoulder failure somewhere around the 230, 229? to 231 area, then it comes back and retests the 220s and breaks it, or we're going to make a full cup formation and retest the 238 high. At this particular point, I think it's the right shoulder failure pattern we're looking at. Um, so that's, a little, that's somewhat negative. Then we've got this chart here, which is the US dollar. Sorry, this is the bonds. This is a very long-term chart with a number of uh, technical uh, in indications that I've, I've got, just trend lines and vertical lines. But most importantly, look at the chart right here. The bonds have pulled back very sharply, um, and you've only got a consolidation in the, e in the S and P 500. This is the monthly chart. So how we come out in May, how the final day of May concludes. Given that so far, this is a pretty darn sharp move, one of the sharpest moves to the downside we've had since maybe 2013, uh, right there when we broke down, not the first part, but the second part from May, uh, uh, exactly two years ago. So you've got to watch this real closely. And, and as I say, there's just a beautiful straight line at the bottom here of support, but there's also a straight line at the top of of resistance. So we'll be watching that. And now the final thing on this page that I wanted to show is the breakout in the weekly chart of the in leg C of both the 30 year T note yields and the 10 year, sorry, 30 year T bond yield and the 30 year T note yields in leg C's. We haven't got that yet in the five year. Five years been in its own little orbit. Of, of just a small trading band for quite some time, while the others have much bigger movements. So that's that bears watching. Now, a couple of things that I want you to do. So just going back to CLVS, and, oh, somebody was listening to us because it just spiked up even more. So I, I like the fact that the the smaller, the, the, the oh, let me just finish. This is the 120 minute chart that I can finish it with uh, some authority rather than just guessing. So this is a D and that's an E. Get a down arrow. This is the retracement mode. Doesn't have to be a leg a, a peak A, B, C, D. If it is, that's fine. But in fact, it makes an A and a B and a C and then a D and then even an E in an inside buy signal to buy mode to a sell signal and sell mode. That comes down in trough A, B, uh, trough A, B, C, D, E. And now it's got a brand new move to the upside, and that move to the upside has gone A, B, C, D. So we're concluding um, A, B, C, D. We have a buy signal to buy mode, and we'll see how long that can last. Um, so this is a retracement mode in the C in CLVS. Is acting very well at this particular point. It has broken the resistance. 
a trend line resistance, but it is a leg D. Um, I'm still going to stick with what I said before. If you added it just a moment ago, um, uh, Travis, then you've added to this. And now if you've added, I put my stop, I'd raise my stop and say that the stop has to be the open of 85.34 on, on the small term position that you have um, and make that a four point trading stop just to be safe. I suspect you will get your D out of this. We'll, we'll know if by tomorrow it's trading at uh, over 91 and said 90, 89, 98. No, 91. Well, 92.60 is the next resistance, and then you get your all-time high of 94.88. Acting beautifully. Very nice. Um, okay. Now, I needed to do a couple of things here. Uh, one is, let me turn around. Yes. Questions about about the um, my Dow Quartet. GE is acting okay. A lot of news. What did they sell today? They sold to a European a European to a government or something. Anyway, it's, it's some some sale again. I think of property or something like that. But it's just in this trading band. It's acting okay in the sense that as a very short term indicator, suggesting that the market has a little bit of, uh, uh, of a, a positive bias. But it's starting to signal that that lim is a limited upside from here, and that we've got to be somewhat careful if, if G suddenly closes down on the, at the end of the day. And you've got, let me just move this away, and you've got uh, IBM, IBM, IBM trading up $1.40, hasn't been able to take out the PG high in the um, daily, but there's a chance that if it's not this week, the next week you could get leg D above the high of 176.30, then we've got to be somewhat careful. And there'll still only be a single leg A up in the weekly, I'm oh, sorry, in the monthly. Now let's go to triple M, one, two, three, there we go. Triple M acting okay, but look, it's way, way off its highs at 162, the high was 170.50. Um, I suspect that this is still in this big digestive stage and UTX, my other pilot light indicator, is acting very well on the day, but monthly wise, weekly wise, and monthly wise, not very good actually. Actually, the weekly, monthly is a little bit better than the weekly, but um, it's it's just trying to bounce off a very oversold condition. My suspicion at 118.91 has a little further to go, maybe 119.60 to 120.25. Then we'll see whether if we can get there whether it turns around. That's going to be very important. Okay, so uh, look at this IYT. Um, this is this is the I shares of the tra uh, transportation average um, ETF, and it's acting very poorly. The high was 167.80, is trading at 153. Doesn't sound like much, 14 points, but that's nearly 10 percent. So it's had a 10% correction. The Dow is just real close to all-time highs within a, a percent or so. So this, this is a divergence going on. It's a divergence that I should, in fact, uh, consider to be um, a negative. And especially as the cup formation, the second cup formation is about to fail, it might turn into an H, but it's a little late for that. So I'm, I'm a little concerned about the transportation index. Um, they don't... I don't follow Dow theory per se, although I'm always aware of it, and I'm also aware of it over many, many decades, many, many decades, well, over a long period of time, um, how it correlates or doesn't correlate so to the, to the general market. So at this particular point, it doesn't correlate. There's a divergence. Now let's look at this. The dollar D-E-D-O-W. This is the Dow Jones Germany stock kind of an index that they've made, which has the same chart pattern as the real thing. Not all that good. Nice day today, but actually it's pulled back quite a bit. And the weekly chart, that's saying I should be able to put a down arrow by Friday if it doesn't close above 405.80. And right now it's at 400.23, up 6.79. So we're going to be watching that very closely for Friday's close, GBDO. And then the Great Britain, uh, the, the United Kingdom, what do they call it? They call it Dow Jones. Um, United Kingdom, I think, yep, yeah, United Kingdom uh, stock index. Look, made a peak E in the weekly, only a leg D, doesn't finish the month, but it's a leg D so far in the monthly. 
And it's got, you remember the time, left side, right side, price? No, left side, right side, time match that I spoke about in the S&P. Well, look what's happened. It's got the same thing right here. That there's no new high in the uh, monthly chart. So this is a maze of very critical time. Now, I had been thinking, uh, riding high in April, shot down in May. I wouldn't call this shot down. I'd say that it's, it, there's a lot of resiliency in the, in the market. Let me just tell you this. I thought this was kind of kind of cute. It just came to me while I was working on it last night. Um, for my subscribers, what I wrote was, you know, every day I do my Dow chart and I do an analysis based on the Chapman Wave. I show the parameters of resistance, et cetera, and support. So what I'd written last night was bulls and bears with a question mark. Nah. More like line dance practice. A few paces back and a few paces forth. Then swing your partner as you move from the north. Wiggle and shake and sway your hip. Then repeat the process as you do the flip. So that's exactly what we're doing now. We're flipping from the back to the front, and we've got a doji candle with a zero, almost a 0% zero change in the Dow. And today we've got the upside, and it bumps right into that dash line resistance. And what we've seen for months is when the, when the Dow gets to, let me just show you here this in the, uh, when the Dow gets to that range, it reverses, and when it gets to the lower range, it reverses again. So you've got to be considering uh, that, it looks fantastic at this particular point with the Dow and the S&P so close to all-time highs. But this is a period where we've seen realignment, where you've seen that there's not enough oomph to break out to the upside. I'm trying to find here what Dow stock since So Intel's only up a little bit, 22 cents. Oh, you've got U and H up two. You've got IBM up one and a half. You've got uh, Microsoft uh, soft up 97 cents. Well, it's a kind of a mixed market. Even in that bag, you get your healthcare, you get your IBMs, you got your. Let me see what Chevron's doing. Um, well, Exxon is only up 28 cents. So you've got Merck rallying a little bit. Now, I, I'm inclined to think, uh, as I had said before, this is a very selective uh, rally, but the price is the price. And that, I do not fight price. I'm saying if the Dow breaks to all-time highs, my mindset has to immediately change from trading band to breakout. Remember my expression, rectangle formations can last a lot longer than your patience. But once you break out on the upside, then you have to be prepared that that upside could continue or you've raised the base. Meaning that if you go back, you're not going all the way back to the bottom. You're going to go back to maybe a halfway point and then rally again. So this is very important because if there is a decisive reversal by Friday, the Dow is trading closer to 18,070 uh, to 18,020. That'll be very significant. If the Dow is closing in the 18,300 area, and that's only 100, 100 points from here, 120 points from here would really be quite decisive. Then you have to respect the fact that there's been a rotation for months and the rotation in a sense could be completed as new leadership unfolds. And that's the way I have to do that. And that's why for the shorts, we have very tight, so pretty darn tight stops, not prepared to hold um, and, and be wrong in the sense that it's different completely if you're buying some kind of insurance insurance is just that you're prepared to lose it because the the greatest side's going to do well but that's all then i would not have pure short conditions as just short conditions because of market conditions they'd be because the sector of the stocks are looking very good that's a chapter tight end condition our that's up 151 s&p's up 14 and three quarters you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary perspective 
Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Do you know the seven most critical factors that influence every decision you make and how not knowing these will jeopardize the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve? I'm Steve Rhodes, morning host at TFNN.com, and for the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets of human growth, the same formulas used by leaders of nations, billionaires and millionaires, and the most successful athletes on the planet. Would you like to break through any obstacle that gets in between you and the success you deserve? Would you like to turn fear into strength? If you could find a way to achieve, be fulfilled, and live a life of meaning, wouldn't you want to know the answer? I'll teach you the factors that control your state of mind and the drivers that impact every thought, emotion, behavior, and action we take in my new webinar, The Psychology of Trading. Join me for this two-part online event where I'll unveil the secrets to human pattern recognition because they're not what you think. And soon, you'll have the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on The Psychology of Trading to begin your journey now. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. The Futures Hour, next on TFNN. Hi, folks. We're back. So it's at a time like this that you want to look and you want to say, okay, which stocks were acting lousy and have suddenly seen buyers? And this is part of the rotational aspect that I've been talking about for so long. Look, Facebook went to 86 and then dropped to 77, 9 points, 11% uh, correction. Uh, not even correction, decline, okay? And then what happens is the weekly chart make a, made a peak C1, C2, but that was at all-time highs. And the uh, monthly chart has got a leg G slash C and holding the line period moving average. Looks like the MACD wants to make that M-shaped pattern, which would allow Facebook, if it can continue to rally over the next two, three weeks, to try to get back to the 8607 level to make a W formation and at the same time to complete a leg up in the uh, monthly chart to make leg D, just a modest leg D. But that's a possibility. Look at that strong candle today, up 2.54, up 3.24%. So we've got to watch this. We've got to look at it and say, hey, if there is enough energy left 
in the stocks that have been basically lagging for a little while, then you've got to look at it and say, that's enough energy to be able to take the market higher. That's the way I like to look at it. How within the rotational correction can some sectors pull back and out of the blue, stocks that have looked very weak just a day or so ago have enough strength suddenly to uh, start to rally. Look at Microsoft. I don't. Uh, I, I, the, the monthly chart has got their U-shaped pattern. They've been looking at all morning in the different stocks. And 50.05 might be achievable. Just for it to get another point and a half higher to the 50 could, in fact, help the Dow enough to push the Dow up another maybe 10, 12 points. So you get that in IBM, um, which is um, – got the same u-shaped pattern but on a lower level and they try to retest there's another one and a half points you add them up and all of a sudden you're looking at what was very home depot let's look at that home depot has come off the bottom it went all the way from 118 down to the one sixes and in this particular point is at 111 trying to rally so you you could find enough rotational stocks within each sector, like in the case of the Dow or the S&P, that has enough oomph to the upside to partake in any rally right now. And that could filter through the marketplace so that you get this kind of big number like 155 or 15 in the S&P. That's important. Or in the comp, you know, the QQQ uh, series, that is Look, nice bounce here. Is this a bounce that can take it all the way to a leg D in the weekly to finally get there? Going into, say, next week or the week? I don't know. But at this particular point, you have to say, the Stochastic and MACD are turning up, but they haven't turned, they haven't crossed positive yet in the, in the daily. The weekly is flattening out. It's okay, but it's not great technicals. But the price is moving. And you, I do not want to argue with the price because the price, I'm looking at the price. It's right there. It's a nice candle so far today. You turn around, you fail by the end of the day, and I'll say, hey, not such a nice candle. But while it's acting well, it's acting well. But it is quite a bit under the most recent highs in the 111s. It's at 109. Um, so that's that. And now I'm a little concerned here because Ford is breaking down. General Motors is breaking down. Toyota Motors had fantastic earnings. That's an American company. You know, out of all the, 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 the companies that have 75% of the, the product uh, built, manufactured, and the parts coming from the United States, I believe that's how it's read. You've got uh, some Toyota products doing that. Isn't that interesting, huh? So <laughs> that American company, Toyota Motors, <laughs> um, yeah, so there it is. So, yeah, it's, uh, we're about to go to uh, Larry Pizzavento. Whoa, what a perfect time for Larry. Great show, I'm sure. Coming up today, let me just one thing. I'll talk about the VIX as we wrap up. That VIX is back down to the 12.90s. If that VIX, instead of breaking into the 14s, it's reluctant to do that, starts to go into the 11s by Friday, you can... Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.